So it's the end of an era. Bed Bath & Beyond has filed for bankruptcy and will liquidate all inventory. This headline came yesterday, April 23rd. Today, I thought I would give you a quick review. Yesterday, Bed Bath & Beyond declared bankruptcy and this article showed up on CNN.com, which is that Bed Bath & Beyond plans to liquidate all inventory and go out of business. Today, I thought I would give you a quick review. More than the individual story about Bed Bath & Beyond, we are not going to go into the time capsule. I'm not going to be a Monday morning quarterback to say they should have this, they should have that. Of course, hindsight's always 2020. I don't presume that the people who worked there, I don't presume that the management were incompetent. I don't make that presumption. You can take away very important lessons from the history of Bed Bath & Beyond so that you don't make investing errors. This is the stock chart of BBBY, the ticker for Bed Bath & Beyond. And you can see 29 cents a share today. If you look further back, you will see two years ago that this stock was as high as $31.91 on June of 2021, not long ago, less than two years ago, from $32 a share down to 30 cents. Oops, I'm wrong. 20 cents a share today. The point here is actually not about the fact that the stores were too big and there's too much stock and people don't want to buy their you know, towels from going into a big box store. That is actually not my point here. My point here is to point out how risky it is for you to select individual securities. Bed Bath & Beyond was never large enough to be a substantial part of any of the indices, such as the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, or the Russell 2000. It was market cap was never large enough. Let's just presume that I have a company and let's call it Jay's Rib Shack, right? Meaning that I'm not going to be throwing mud at a particular company. This applies, these lessons apply to all small companies. So for example, in this instance, I can have stock bonds. In other words, I'm raising money in two different ways. Number one, I'm borrowing money. And number two, I'm issuing stock. What happens for bonds? Your first and priority of payment, just like at your home, for example, right? You've got to make rent. You've got to pay your mortgage. Before you go out to fancy dinner, you got to make sure that your mortgage payment is made. Otherwise, what? The bank owns your home. In other words, the lenders own their right to your income and money if you don't make payments. And in the same way, that is the same way as a company. In other words, before the stock owners get paid, before the stock owners get paid, the bond owners need to be paid. Here's some quick insight that all of my professional experience when it comes to financial markets starts at the bond market. It's the bigger market. It's where the professional investors exe exist. It is far larger than the shares of any individual company or even the collective size of the stock market. Once the bills are paid, however, then yes, the stock owners get the benefits. My mortgage payment is made. As a result, I have extra money because I've worked hard and as a result, there's extra income. So what do we get to do? You get what? You get to eat better food. You get to go on vacations. You get to modify your house. You get to put stuff, the nice TVs in your house. You get to buy new computers. You get financial benefits from the extra productivity, the income earned. Very similar to Jay's Rib Shack. Lots of people like Jay's Ribs. So they come in here. The first monies go to pay the mortgage, the rent, the payroll, 
the utilities. From there, however, the people who own the equity, own the stock of Jay's Rib Shack, start benefiting. And they start betting, benefiting greatly. And this is the glamour, of course, of stocks. It's all understandable. However, what you see here is the flip side is that the value of the enterprise is there for, and you can see I made this little example, which is a very simple, oversimplified example, of course. So let's say that I borrowed $100 in Jay's Rib Shack, and then the stock gets the rest, and I sold 50 shares, five zero shares, at $2 each. So in other words, my enterprise value, the value, actual value of Jay's Rib Shack, is the value of the bonds plus the value of the stock. In other words, 100 for the bonds and 100 for the stock. In other words, 200. So what ends up happening in, in the real world? Well, in the case of meme stocks, and Bed Bath & Beyond was a meme stock on Reddit on a board called Wall Street Bets that basically they talk about the stock and instead of $2, what happens is the stock propelled up to $8. Hype. Hey, look, the company's going to do this. They're going to do that. They're going to have these other machinations and all of a sudden things that prospects are going to improve or the stock is going to go higher because too many people are short the stock, pushing the price higher. And in fact, yes, you did see that here. For example, right here. This stock went from $12.96 to $22 in very short time frame. This is January of 2022 until March of 20. In two months, you went from $12 to $22 quickly. The issue here, of course, then, immediately thereafter, what did you see? You saw a plummet from this number, $22.84, $22.84. You saw a decline to $4.71. 18 divided by 22. In other words, you lost 80%. And in equally rapid fashion, this is end of March of 2022. This is the end of June. In three months, you lost 80% of your investment for every dollar that you owned of Bed Bath & Beyond. The fact is that in the background, what actually happened was there was some thought that they were going to be able to refinance this portion, the bonds. In other words, that they were be able to go to the bank and say, or to bond investors who are basically lending money similar to the way a mortgage bank would lend you money. That the idea is, look, we're going to secure new borrowing so that we don't have to close. And as a result, What's going to happen? That gives better prospect to the stock owners. And as a result, the stock can go higher. And that's exactly what they did. Until what? They find out, oh, there are other mechanics that can occur. Can occur. The financing falls apart. That's number one. Number two. Yeah, I said that you could basically raise borrow more money in by going to the banks and borrowing more if they would allow or going to bond investors and asking them to lend you money. Another way, however, is that you could have me, the owner or the management, selling more stock. In other words, instead of $50 a share, nobody said that this couldn't, that they then on top of that, and let's just do that here. Let's increase and let's put this row here. They could then sell another 300 shares at $1 each, thereby raising another 300. 
the company though is not any longer worth this number 200 is it you have 350 shares 350 shares at the then market price which is now 100 one dollar right because that's your market price so you have 350 shares at one and plus here so maybe you're saying it's 450. so while it may look like the enterprise is more the fact is you own let's just say you own one share let's say you own a single share right before you used to to own one share of 50 equals two percent now you own one share of 350 equals less than 0.3 percent in other words what has happened here is the company has not ch has changed in value but your share has been diluted a lot you've gone from a two percent owner of the stock to a 03 percent owner of the stock your single share has been diluted so what can happen during this happens this is just price per share. This is not about enterprise value. Bang. There's no way to tell you every single blow, every single event that has occurred during this up and down. And certainly there has been tragedy also because there, the CFO unfortunately ended his own life. My main takeaway for everyday people is the following is sitting over here i've also explained it to you in the past it's here you should pause the video here and read through this spreadsheet this is the kind of activity that can occur when stocks that are not large companies that are not large can occur there are many, many complicated layers to a company. When I see stock bonds and stock, for example, there are professionals who are looking at every layer and comparing which one's better value, bond or stock. They don't care. They're not married to the idea that they're only a bond investor or only a stock investor. They're interested in highest return for a given dollar. That's not doesn't make them evil. So should you, by the way. So should you. You can see, however, how complicated it is. In other words, this is these are simplified, watered-down examples that I know of, and they're going to be more complicated because I'm not on the ground floor here. Jay's Rib Shack, you can, if you are an investor, you can short the stock if you think that Jay's Rib Shack is going to go belly up. You can. People stop coming to the store. People, you know, there's Dutch's hot dog stand next door and it's far cheaper and it's far better. I've got a problem. Oh, so did Bed Bath & Beyond. The bond started to decline. And here's a very important part. You can remember that earlier in today's video, I talked about the fact that the bond market is bigger and the professional market. For individual people, you have no ac effective access to anything that happens to the bond prices or the negotiations that occur on borrowing and lending between Jay's Rib Shack and the banks or Jay's Rib Shack and the bond owners. You don't know the price professional investors do it can easily be the case it happens go ahead and look in google and look up distressed debt jay's rib shack borrowed a hundred dollars but jay's bond jay this same borrowing is a bond and it trades in markets amongst financial professionals there are certain bonds out on the planet 
that trade at 50 cents on the out of this $100, $50. In other words, the market has already determined that Jay's Rib Shack is very unlikely to be able to repay 100. Do you remember the example I used at the beginning? Let's say you knew that I could not pay for my mortgage. If that were the case, what's the chance that you're going to be an investor in stock of Jay's Rib Shack at that point? So if you didn't know this information first, how are you invested in the stock second? Especially when the fact that this is dominated by the professional market. Does this make it rigged? No, no, it doesn't. Hopefully you get a couple of takeaways. Number one, this is the way that companies are set up. JP Morgan's case, it is too big, right? In other words, these kinds of differences are glossed over. That doesn't mean that people just indiscriminately buy JP Morgan stocks or bonds or preferred stock, convertible stock, for example, or that becomes the same case in Apple. This is not investment advice, right? That comparison is being run all the time, 24-7, 365. It has no holiday. Once the company gets a smaller part of the S&P 500 or the investment landscape globally, However, now these things in the backdrop become far more sensitive. Your lack of information to Jay's Rib Shack becomes more extreme. I'm not in the press. They don't know. They're not reporting to you that Jay's Rib Shack bonds are trading at 50 cents on the dollar. Instead, what you have is Reddit Wall Street bets hyping up stock, driving prices around to people who have no idea, who should have had no business investing here unless you are purely speculating. That is not to say that speculation by itself is the root of all evil. It isn't. Because for the peep, for example, the people who have bought here, happened to buy here at $13 and exited at $23 made a truckload of money in two months. So I'm not going to tell you that, you know, you can never be successful by speculating in issues that look like Bed Bath & Beyond. I'm not going to tell you that because that is clearly untrue, right? The, the people who bought the stock here sold here. Some people then shorted here meaning that they made money when the stock price went down. They made even more money when the stock went down. They could have made it both on the way up and on the way down. That has happened. I'm sure of it. I'm absolutely sure of it. However, you need to ask yourself as an individual investor, you need to ask yourself, what exercise am I using? What exercise am I deploying here? What's my objective? And probably most importantly, you must consider the allocation into your overall investment strategy. Again, I'm not calling speculation a bad thing. As long as you understand that's what you're doing, as long as you understand this is the amount that you can afford, given the fact that you are many, many layers down the information flow. Last point. This is why I don't try to talk about stocks and individual companies when and in social gatherings. Right? I've now spoken for 20 minutes. I've not even scratched the surface here. Yet you go to the cocktail party and some of your friends, somebody, somebody that you're sitting there in a conversation, the person says, oh, well, I bought this stock and I read it all up and I've done a bunch of research. You've done research on what's publicly available. Maybe. This should just tell you how far, how many extra layers of information are required in order to have an actual edge in selecting Jay's Rib Shack, Bed Bath & Beyond. 
By the way, it's not over here on Bed Bath & Beyond as if it's the singular isolated case. One of the largest stocks in meme land, meme stocks, if you remember what that is, AMC, where they diluted the stock, huge. More on that on a different day. Hopefully you liked today's video. I try to give you information here on Jay's Corner, which isn't sitting there on the popular press. It's not the individual story, but rather the takeaway, because it will repeat in some fashion. However, what I'm telling you here will be able to be applied time and time and time again. That's why you don't need to be 65. You don't need to be 45. You can be 25 and get something here on Jay's Corner. Thanks.